Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we began to see that we could come up with some pretty large numbers for which we need to take a factorial. For example, we may end up with trying to figure out what the factorial of 100 is. And of course, we know that's equal to 100 times 99 times 98, all the way down to times 1. But that's going to be an enormous number. Can you imagine sitting there with a calculator 100 times multiplying numbers together? What about the factorial of 1,000 or the factorial of 10,000? How do we calculate that? So that's kind of a difficult thing to do. But someone very smart named Sterling figured out how to approximate that number. And it turns out, for n being a very large number, his approximation is extremely accurate. Let me tell you why that is so. We can take the natural log of the fact n factorial, which means it's the natural log of 1 plus the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 3. Because remember, when you multiply numbers together and you take the natural log of a product that is equal to the natural log of each individual term separated from one another with a plus sign. We can simply add them together like that. So now we can also imagine that these quantities right here, the natural log of 1, which by the way, that 1 is 0, because the natural log of 1 is 0, but starting with the natural log of 2, the natural log of 3, and so forth, those can be represented by the area of these rectangles, where the width is equal to 1, and the height is equal to the natural log of 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. You can see as the number gets bigger, that if we draw a line to the top of these rectangles, you can see that this line, the slope begins to diminish down to zero eventually. As n becomes very large, the slope will be very, very close to zero. And we can then assume that if we then take, if we then find the equation of this line, it becomes y equals the natural log of n. And so we can then say that these quantities right here, if these represent the areas of these rectangles, if we then sum them up, and add them all up, the sum of those rectangles, or the sum of the area of those rectangles, will then equal the natural log of n factorial. So basically, the natural log of n factorial will simply equal to the sum of the area of all these rectangles, which means it's equal to the integral of the natural log of n times the n from 1 to n, because that really then represents the area underneath this curve, and if we make this big enough, then the area of this curve will eventually become equal pretty well equal to the natural log of n factorial. So let's go ahead and find the integral of that and evaluate it from 1 to n and see what that comes out to be. And that is what we call Stirling's approximation. Now, to integrate this, we need to use integration by parts, which means that the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So here we have to establish what is u and what is dv. So what we can do here is we can say that u is equal to the natural log of n and dv is equal to dn. That means that du then becomes 1 over n times dn and dv becomes n. All right, so now that we know that, let's go ahead and plug that in here. So this is going to be equal to u times v. That would be, and I'm going to reverse it times v times u because it makes it easier to write. So it's going to be n times the natural log of n minus the integral of v. v is going to be, oh, I should go v equals n like that. So v is going to be n times du, which is 1 over n dn. And of course, the n's cancel out. And of course, I have to integrate that or evaluate that from 1 to n and from 1 to n. All right, so now I can integrate this part because that's simply the integral of dn. So this becomes equal to n times the natural log of n minus the integral of dn, which is simply n. And the whole thing is going to be evaluated from 1 to n. OK, plug in the upper limit and then subtract it when I plug in the lower limit. So this becomes, when I plug in the upper limit, I get n times the natural log of n minus n. So I get the same thing. Minus when I plug in the lower limit. When I plug in the lower limit, I get 1 times the natural log of 1. 1 times the natural log of 1 minus 1. And of course, I have to put brackets around it because I'm subtracting the whole thing. Wow, the natural log of 1, that's equal to 0. So this cancels out. And so minus times a minus becomes plus. So ultimately, we can then say that since this is equal to the natural log of n, so the natural log of n factorial is equal to n times the natural log of n plus 1. Oop, oop, I think I'm forgetting my minus n here. Sorry about that. n times the natural log of n minus n plus 1. I forgot the minus n in there. OK, now typically, they will leave this plus 1 off at the end, especially when n becomes big. n plus 1 
is not really that significant, so they typically let leave the plus one off. You can leave it there, it doesn't really matter. But now we have something that helps us figure this out. So now, what if we want to take 100 factorial? Well, of course, then we need to take the antilog, and let me show you how to use that particular equation. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to find the natural log of 100 factorial because that's what we're trying to evaluate here. And so we can say the natural log of that is equal to n, which is 100, times the natural log of 100 minus 100 plus 1. And I'll just leave the plus 1 in for now. So now with the calculator, let's see what we get. So we take the natural log of 100, that's 4.605, times 100. So this becomes, this is equal to 400 and 60.5 minus 100 plus 1, that would be 360.5 plus 1, that would be 361.5. So now we've established that the natural log of 100 is equal to 361.5. So how do I now go back to 100 factorial? Well, it turns out that we can do the following. So the way we're going to solve this is in order for us to rearrange in such a way that we can write it as an exponential, the ultimate thing is to be able to write it in terms of 10 to some exponent. So that's what we want to write. So what we want to do then is convert this to the log base 10. All right. So in order to try to get this format right here, what we need to do here is take this and write it as the log base 10. So instead of writing the natural log of 100 factorial, we want to write the log base 10 of 100 factorial. So we want to convert that, which means that the log of base 10 of 100 factorial is equal to 1 over the natural log of 10, because it's the natural log of the base, times the natural log of 100 factorial. And of course, we already know what this is equal to. This is equal to 361.5. So what we have to do then is, this is equal to 361.5 divided by the natural log of 10. So 10, take the natural log of that, which is 2.3026, 2.3026. So let's go ahead and do that, take the inverse of that, and multiply it times 361.5, and we get 157. All right, so... If the log base 10 is equal to 100 factorial, then 100 factorial will be equal to 10 raised to 157. So finally, we can then conclude that 100 factorial is equal to 10 raised to the 157 power. And that's how we evaluate a very large factorial. So what we do first is we use Stirling's approximation. And Stirling's approximation says that the natural log of a very large number can be calculated to be this. It will be n, the number, times the natural log of the number, minus the number plus 1, which is 361.5. Then we can say that we can convert from the natural log of the number factorial to the, the log base 10 of that same number factorial. So instead of 361.5, we end up with 157 by taking the natural log of 100 factorial and divided by the natural log of the base 10. That's the same as taking this divided by 2.3026, gives us 157. So therefore, we conclude that 100 factorial equals 10 to the 157 power. So now we can use Stirling's approximation to calculate very large factorials and write them as exponentials of the base 10. And that's how we do that.